What's going on, Sumolings? Thank you so much for joining us for another product walkthrough webinar. I am Lindsay, and I am joined by the team over at Quick Reviewer. Quick Reviewer is an online proofing software that enables creative teams to get faster reviews and approvals on videos, PDFs, HTMLs, and images. It is available right now on AppSumo, starting at just $49 for a lifetime deal. Um, but before we jump into the walkthrough, I just want to tell you a few quick things. Um, the first is if you want to tell us a little bit about your use case, why you're interested in Quick Reviewer, you can go ahead and do that over in the chat room. The second thing is that if you have any questions about the tool, about the deal, how to get set up, anything like that, leave those questions in the Q&A box down below the video. We do have uh, somebody from the Quick Reviewer team on standby to answer those questions, but we'll also be circling back to questions at the end of the walkthrough. Um, so you can look forward to that. The last thing is that there will be a replay of this available. So, uh, you can watch this as many times as you want. And that's it for me. A call. How are you doing? Hi, thank you, Lindsay. I'm doing good. Wonderful. We're really quite kicked about having partnered with AppSumo for these lifetime deals. We are very excited to have you here. We're excited to feature quick reviewer in the shop. I'm going to go ahead and jump off screen, but uh, let me know when you're ready for those questions. And Sumo Lings, if you have any questions, go ahead and leave those in the Q&A box. Yep, thank you so much. And we've actually Take been uh, overwhelmed and with quite a lot of amazing responses that we've got so far from the Sumo Lings. Um, well, what we really loved about it is how you've given us a lot of feedback and a lot of good feedback about how you would like the new features and improvements to be added to Quick Reviewer. And I think that's going to make Quick Reviewer a lot more usable for you. And it could help us take it to the next level. We really appreciate that. So over the next 20 odd minutes, I'm going to quickly show you how to use Quick Reviewer and the basic idea around uploading, sharing files. It could be with internal or external reviewers and to get feedback from them. And in the end, of course, we will answer any questions that you can throw at us. Of course, you can keep on adding the questions and Abdul will keep on replying to them as required. So let's jump straight into it then. Once you've redeemed your AppSumo codes, you need to visit the login screen, which looks like this. Of course, here I have using a fresh account because my account is quite cluttered. So I thought I'd just use a different account. Um, there are two ways to log in. The first option, of course, is you use your email ID and password. And the other is to sign in with Google. So I'm going to just click sign in and I'll go onto the home page of Cathy's. Now, once you reach the home page, this is where all of my documents are available. And this section of Quick Reviewer lets you create folders, upload files. And let me quickly just show you the left menu first. There's my documents, which has all of the documents that you upload into the system. There's shared with me, which shows all of the documents that have been shared with you from any other quick reviewer user. The recent that are the top five files that you have accessed. Starred are any uh, files that you want to mark as important. So you want quick access to that. And of course, there's the trash. Anything you delete goes into the trash and you can empty it directly. The other menus I will go into later. At the bottom, of course, you can send a request for support and feedback. And right at the bottom, you can track the amount of storage that you have. In your case, it'll be 25, 50 or 100 gigabytes. And it'll keep on tracking the amount of storage that has been used. So you know exactly what is left. The other thing you'll have here is uh, not an upgraded storage, but to stack codes or add stacks up to three codes, which will automatically pop up a window where you can add your additional codes. The first thing I want to tell you about is the new button, which is on the top left. Now, of course, uh, this is what lets you create new workspaces, new folders and upload files. We'll go into workspaces in the end. And I'll show you two ways of uploading files. One is by using this button and the other is simple drag and drop. For starters, I'm going to create a new folder and let me just name this AppSumo. It's the easiest way to go. With that, a new folder has got created. 
Now, obviously, if you've uh, created a folder, you have a couple of options to share it, to remove it, or to rename it. And I can change this to something like the app promo campaign. And voila, it's changed. You now have a folder. And in that folder, as you would have guessed, you can now drag and drop files. I have some files that are ready in various formats. There's PDF, video, a couple of HTML files, and an image. Now you'll notice that I simply dragged and dropped them onto, uh, you can call this the dashboard or the pasteboard. And one by one, each of these five items will keep on getting uploaded into the system. And as they keep getting uploaded, there you'll see a thin line that crosses, which is processing the image or the video. And what the processing is doing, it is uh, encoding it and it is optimizing the file. You'll have to excuse my internet connection from home. It's quite a bit of a challenge getting even small files uploaded into the system. See, there you can see it all processing and uploading. So we have a PDF that's done. We have a video. We have a couple of HTML files that are going to keep on getting uploaded. And while uh, this upload is taking place, I can tell you a little bit about the top right side where you can change the viewing of the list. So you can see it in uh, the preview mode, which is in boxes, or you can see it in the list view, which is one below the other. On the top right side, of course, you have the options of your profile, changing password, signing out, and two theme options. One is the dark theme, and one is the standard light theme. So now that these five files have been uploaded, you'll be able to see the previews or the thumbnails on each of these files on top. And when I mouse over any of the files, it gives me three standard options. The first on the top right is to share the file. So this is a quick way to share the file forward to any of the viewers. You can upload a revision directly, or you can see the information or details about the specific file. I'm going to jump straight into sharing it. We start with a single file. Now you can share a single file, multiple files, or an entire folder. And right on top, you can copy a shareable link. That means anybody you share this link with can then review the file. The other option, of course, is that you can invite people, type a name, and automatically it'll appear, or it could be any email. It doesn't matter if it's Gmail or your own team or somebody external, a third party. And at the bottom, you can include a note. Check this out. And you can do two options here. One is to disable download for everyone, and the other is to allow commenting without login. Each user that you add here, you can give them two options of control. One is to comment, or the other is to view. If you give them just the option to view, then they can't add comments. And of course, if you give them the option to comment, then they can comment on the system. On the right side, two names that have been added here are people who I have contacted in the past. So this list will keep on getting added with more and more users that you send files to for review more often. So I can actually click on all three of them and share. Now, once this is shared, an email will go across to the users with the link. I will try to just copy this link here which means that you do not need anybody to log into the file when you, or log into Quick Reviewer to be able to view a specific file. Uh, for a quick way to show this, I'm just gonna to switch to a different browser, Safari, and I'm gonna paste this link. Now imagine that you've already sent this link on email to one of your reviewers and they've clicked on the link. What will happen is that it'll open this proofing window. And as you can see in the middle, right, there's an option for you to add your name. And this means that it's not necessary for any of your reviewers to actually log into Quick Reviewer before they have to review or add comments. The other thing is that this lets you uh, give them the ability to add their name. So if I write something random like Mr. Brown, what Mr. Brown can now do is he can add comments. This window that you see currently is the proofing window or the review window. 
on the top left side, you have the name of the file. After that, you have the versions. Then you have two options in the case of image on how to add comments. So these are annotations. One is to drop a pin and the other is to draw a triangle or a rectangle. Then you have the option to change or the zoom. Along with that, the option to approve and reject. And then all of the details and comments that will be added on the right side. While or before I actually add comments, I want to explain that in commenting, what we believe is that it should be live commenting. And how we define live commenting is that if somebody adds a comment into the system here, you should be able to see it pretty much immediately on the original file. And uh, for that, I'm going to open two of the proofing windows. One is from Mr. Brown. And one is the proofing window that me as Kathy, who is the creator or the designer, has uploaded into the system. I'm going to put these in horizontal mode on top of each other. So you can see the live commenting. Now note, I, of course, am sitting in India and our live server is in the US. If I take a comment from Mr. Brown by clicking on the top left side and saying perhaps this is two, four, three, forty billion. The second it updates, whoops. Ah. Apologies. I think I've closed the other file. So the second I type the information here, it'll automatically update on top. And let me try this again in the case of response. So if I'm back onto Kathy and I say, no, this number is correct. And save and post it. It will automatically appear. No, this number is correct. So the data actually that's imported from one to the other, uh, the software pushes the comment from one live user and automatically imports it to the other in live mode. In my case, as you can see on the top, I've got the option to download. But in the case of the second user that I shared it with Mr. Brown, I do not have the option to download because I had restricted the download option for his link. The same system works for any of the other file types and maybe share a second file with Bob. By the way, I can also right click and share the file with multiple people as well. So can I share the file? That should be available in my shared with me folder. So we have the video right here. When I double click on the video, it opens the proofing window. On the proofing window for videos, it works uh, similar to the way it does for images, except that here you have a moving video, right? And I can first adjust the size that I want. And most, in most cases, you would wind up fitting to width. All of the controls on the right here allow me to handle everything in the video. Any comment that I add on the video will also appear on the right side. Too many clouds. And the comment gets added here. Also in the top timeline, you'll see a little dot in orange, which is my color code. And that lets me see exactly where the comments have been added. I can add a second one. Darker. That adds both the comments one below the other on the same lines. Now there are two options that you can handle in the right bar. And one is that you can either click on the comment and it'll jump straight to the file or the comments that you've added. If you decide that you want to remove the comment, you can delete it directly from the right bar. And the comment and the dot will both disappear. In all cases, I have the option on the top right side to approve and reject the file completely. Any comments that I add here are also available on Kathy's proofing window. When I double click the file, it'll show me that Bob has placed a specific comment at a location 
on the file. To jump straight to the comment, again, I can click on the dot, or if I've gone ahead, I can click on the comment. I can respond to this and save the comment. If we jump back to the review window, the same system works for images and PDFs and so on and so forth. In the case of PDFs, I have some additional options in the system that let me select text or search for specific text, highlight, strike through. So in a PDF, it's already taken the text that I can select and highlight. I can keep on adding comments across the file. And if I feel that there are specific words that I'd like to search for, in the right controls, I can actually click on the search button and I can say something like people. Now this will automatically search for all of the matches where people is available. And as I click the next and the previous buttons, it will jump to the locations where people is mentioned in the file. You can see there are six of seven matches. I can highlight all of them. I can match the case exactly, or I can only look for whole words. And how whole words would work is that if I put PEO, it would show that there are no phrases found of PEO. But when I unlist it, at least it would show me that there's one match where there's a capital P in people. Now on the left side, the other options that we have are status. Now you can create a separate status or a custom status that you have for each file. If you look at each card, and for this I'm going to go back to my My Documents folder, you will be able to see multiple options or details for each card. You have the file name, and I'm going to select a file here to show you this. You can mouse over to see who all it's been shared with. In this case, you can mouse over on this to see who all have made comments on the file. And similarly, on the extreme left, there are various statuses that are listed here. These are default statuses in Quick Reviewer. However, with the option of status, I can add a custom status here. Say we name this as uh, in production. Now the in production status now will get created. I haven't added a description in this of course, but I should have. And once this has been created, any file that I go over, I can change the status of that file to the new status that has been added in the system. So I can mark it as in production. Below that, I'll come to mail groups in a bit. Let me go straight into settings. Sumolings have been asking about more details around white labeling. So in the settings, you have the ability to actually upload a logo. And when I upload a logo here, I can click on the icon for edit and I can select a logo that I want displayed on the top left side. In my email settings, I can add a name, I can add Kathy at quickreviewer.com and I can even add custom SMTP settings over here, which I won't do right now in the interest of time. So once I've added all these details, all I need to do is save the basic information. And for starters, when I refresh the page, as it's mentioned, you'll see the new logo updated on the top left side of the user interface. There we have the MindWave logo on the top. So now no matter which folder I go into, you have some basic white labeling that has been done there. On the same lines, I can go into the mail templates. And in the mail templates, I can create a new template that I want based on the functionality that I want the email to go out for. Uh, as an example, if I want to share a file, right, I use the file share template. Now the file share template, of course, is the template that is sent or the email design that gets sent to any user when they are invited to review the system. And I can keep this as file sharing in the subject um, review and I can add the document title in that and 
when I enter the details in the actual file template content, it gives me a list of options that I can choose from. So I can add the logo. I can say, um, please review this file and add the document title here. I can add the document thumbnail and maybe cheers and save it. Now this has created a new file template for file sharing. And of course you could see that there are multiple options. It could be for workspaces, it could be for folders and so on and so forth for any type. And even for notifications that come when somebody adds comments onto the file. I'm going to go back to my documents and I'm going to find a file that doesn't have anybody shared on it. Uh, let's take this file and let me add Zulana at gmail.com and share this specific file or folder. Now, when I share this file over here, you'll see that Akal Sujana now has commenting rights. If I open my Gmail account, I would have received an email which has the custom designed setup. Please review this fashion row of hanging clothes.jpg file. And when I click on it, it of course has the logo, it has the preview, and it has the details. So it's as simple as that. And if you see my reply option, the second I decide to reply to this specific email, even Google is acting up. It goes automatically to Kathy at quickreviewer.com. So when you set your SMTP, even the from will become, mm, well, in this case, it's no reply at quick reviewer, it would be Kathy at quick, quick reviewer, or if it was the Mindwave SMTP, it would go from the Mindwave SMTP. So you have this level of uh, customization in terms of white labeling in the system. And there are more enhancements that are coming up soon, like removing uh, any of the copyrights, adding the C name, so your links are not quick reviewer, but your own company name and so on and so forth. Uh, the next option is to uh, add mail groups and a mail group normally helps because you would very often want a specific set of people to review a file regularly. And if you create a new group, it could be mm, say the marketing guys, right? This is the marketing team. And then I can write, Mr. Jidana, I can write Carl, I can write Bob. So the second I've saved this specific group, now when I go back into my documents and I decide I want to share any of these files with somebody, when I click on the share icon, on the top right side, I will suddenly have the marketing guys group added. And when I click on it, it'll get added to the number of people or the people who I want to invite. When I share, the email will go out to all three of these users in the marketing guys group. So each time you don't have to add each individual user for every single round that you want them to review the file. on. The last part that I want to show you in the demo is workspaces. Now workspaces works a little different from the way uh, folders work. And that is a folder will only allow you to access any of the files or upload any of the files and share them from your own account. Whereas the workspace, and let's keep this the AppSumo workspace, would let anybody who you share the workspace with to upload or edit a file. So for example, if I were to give Bob access to this workspace, and I'll show you the difference in this as well. So Bob now has access to this workspace. I will also give Bob access to this folder. Now, once I've shared the folder with Bob and given access on the workspace, let me go across to Bob's dashboard. Now in the shared with me for, uh, side, you'll see the AppSumo campaign as a folder that has been shared with Bob. Whereas in Bob's My Document, you can see the AppSumo workspace has been added on top. And that means whenever he logs in, now 
if you have somebody who is using a free account which has a 100 MB default and you share a workspace with them, they can now upload files into that workspace and everything that they upload here will come out of your quota and not out of theirs. I will add maybe this PDF from my side and that has gone from Bob. So Bob has uploaded the file now into the AppSumo folder here. And on the other hand, let me jump across to Kathy's dashboard. If I go to Kathy, she can also see the file that Bob has uploaded into the system. And you can share it, you can upload a revision or update stuff into it and so on and so forth with this as well. So that's a very quick rundown of Quick Reviewer. Um, and I think we're open to any additional questions or any questions that you've been asking. Absolutely. Yeah. Sumolings, if you have any questions, you can go ahead and leave those in the Q&A box now below the video. We will be sure to answer them as they come in. Um, the questions that we've received so far, um, how do I remove and replace the copyright clavis technology that is shown in the bottom of the page? Uh, that is one of the enhancements that's going to come out soon next month. Uh, we, there are some additional um, white labeling options that we have coming by next month, including CNAME, which will let you edit the link, removing the copyright and one or two other things. Awesome. Um, all right. Does this, um, I don't want to go into like a, a lot of uh, different integrations, but we did get a specific one for a pretty popular tool. Does this integrate with Asana? Not yet, but uh, that is somewhere in the later pipeline. Currently, oh. um, there are a few integrations which are on higher priority because a lot of requests have come in for that. Um, Google Drive being one of them and uh, Slack being another, and so we on. So kind of another question: Does this integrate with Slack? Um, <laughs> <laughs> soon, soon, in this year. Wonderful, thank you. Um, and I'm, I, I do apologize, Sumlings. If I start asking every single tool, does this integrate with Blank? We'll be here for five years, I think. That's my estimate. Um, so I won't be able to ask a lot of specific integration questions. I apologize. Um, and again, if you have any questions, leave those in the Q&A box. Um, if they're coming in the chat room, I may not get to them. I apologize for that. Um, can you walk through the approval and rejection process? What notifications go through and to whom? How do you set up approvals? Okay, so the um, any file that you open gives you two options in terms of rejection and approval. And if you notice when I double clicked on the file on the top right side, you'll see those options appear in terms of buttons. So you can either approve or reject. Supposing I approve this file, two actions will be, uh, will take place. The first is that on anybody's dashboard, you will suddenly see a mouse over at the bottom of the card where Kathy has approved this and the same works for rejection. The second thing that happens is that an email gets thrown across to Kathy. Now, Kathy at quickreview.com is not really an, a real email ID, so I can't show you that, but I can, we can take that offline at a different point and show a specific demo for that. Uh, that email will go across to Kathy saying that uh, Bob has approved or rejected the file. So that's the approval and rejection part. And anything that you saw in terms of the email templates. So if I create a new template, there's a full list of options. You can do it not just for file share or folder share. It can also be for comments and notifications. That means somebody who adds comments, you'll get an email with a specific format. The same is for approval and rejection notifications. So that's how you set up the entire flow for that. I hope that answered your question. Yeah, thank you. I think so. If, uh, Aisha, if you have a follow-up, let me know. Um, all right, Brandon asks, I, uh, why is there a picture? Sorry, this, this question is very funny. Why is there a picture of a handsome man being shown when Lindsay speaks? Um, <laughs> we uh, we co-share an account, uh, me and the private, previous webinar host. So uh, that very handsome man is Chris Shelsey, 
Um, he appears in a lot of our AppSumo videos and he hosts, uh, he hosts a lot of stuff for us too. So we co-share an account. Um, <laughs> very funny. Thank you, Nick. Um, all right. Brandon asks, I have a lot of documents that are shared across my company that require multiple levels of review. Can you show us how well Quick, Quick Reviewer handles the organization of lots of files? Does Quick Reviewer have a visible way of showing reviewer or approval chains? So Quick Reviewer does have the option to show you everything that happens in terms of an audit log. For example, if I click on any file, and I hit the view details button. On the right side, you can see the entire history of activities that takes place. Of course, in this case, it's very few activities, but anything that gets added in terms of comments or information on that file will be visible here. Uh, the same with the details. Now, if you're asking specifically for a workflow where you have different levels of approvals that you want it to automatically go from one uh, side to the other, that's not available in the pro version but auto um, processing or uh, status based workflow system is available in the enterprise versions. So awesome. Thank that's... you. Um, we have a question. Can you turn off notifications? Yes, you can turn off notifications. Um, there is an option that is being set up soon that will give you that one click setup. Uh, just wait for another month for that to come out. Uh, could Quick Reviewer be hosted on our own domain? Yes, so CNAME is coming up again next month uh, where it's more of a, you use your own domain in terms of the branding here. But if you're talking about hosting the entire uh, solution onto your domain, yes, that's also an option. But again, it's an enterprise feature. That's an enterprise setup. All right. Can you explain the web URL limitations offered as part of the deal? So web URL uh, lets you use any website um, link, right? And that option will come here as a web add new web link. What that does is that when you enter the web URL, it lets you see the entire web page exactly as is, and you can mark your comments and reviews on it. Uh, the limitations that are in the two uh, and three code plans are that you can add only five URLs in the two codes and 10 URLs in the three codes. What a URL basically, uh, imagine, uh, think of them as slots, that you have five slots which you enter the URLs, and once you fill up those five slots, if you want to add a sixth URL, you have to delete one of those um, existing URLs from the slot to free it up. Uh, it's not time bound in terms of monthly or annual, a lot of people have asked that, no, it is, it's lifetime. So you'll have five URLs in two codes in continuously. Awesome. Whenever you Can we have this email in another language, for example, French? So the entire, well, uh, when you customize your email, I, uh, the email, you can type it in French as well and send it out. So the custom emails can be in any language that you can type. Uh, in terms of the entire software, we have French, German, Spanish, Italian coming up uh, in this year and even Turkish later on this year, actually, because there's a lot of demand for that language. Awesome. You showed that it is possible for a, re a reviewer to make comments without having to log in. If they did log in, is there a limit to the number of people that can have an account? What are the benefits of logging in? Uh, login gives you a hundred MB free space. So that uh, normally is used by team members if they want to upload some stuff. And that uh, the other thing is you can only uh, share workspaces with people who have accounts. And thirdly, anything that you see in shared with me is only visible if you have an account. Uh, the sharing part of sending a link or sharing with somebody and allowing them to comment without having to log in is uh, only to save you the hassle of asking any of your reviewers to actually have to create an account. Um, the advantages of having accounts, again, other than the 100 MB is that you get to see a lot of the history, the audit logs, access those files whenever you want in future, if they've been shared with you, and you can see the full audit log on every single asset. Awesome, awesome, awesome. thank you. Uh, if you remove a URL from a slot, does it delete all revision history? Yes, it does delete all revision history or it will delete all revision history. There's a second feature that we're looking at in future, which will allow you uh, 
to kind of archive it. That means export it as a PDF with all of the comments and push it to archival mode. Uh, but that feature is uh, way down the line as opposed to web URLs that's coming up next month. Thank you. Um, and Sumalings, we do have just two more questions left here. So if you have any, now is your time to shine and send them in. All right. Brandon asks, I see how easy it is to drag and drop files for uploading. How would mass downloading files for like a localized backup look like? Well, right now we do not have the ability to uh, bulk download. So we will have to take that as part of the... I may interrupt. Um, yes, there is. You can just quickly select all of them and go to the top menu and click on download. It'll download all of them. So you can show it right now if you like. Oh, apologies on that one. That's all right. Oh, right. Super simple, huh? Right, so... Awesome. Um, so on, I mean, I'm going to keep on downloading the files one by one. Cool. Because they're decently heavy files. Looks extremely easy. Um, download multiple files. Allow. Yeah, I would say I'd say that's great. Um, all right. When will audio review be available? Audio review is also expected uh, in the coming month, in cool. August. So can be... we, wow, August is coming up. Where has this year gone? All right. Can we simply have accounts created for clients and all they do is log in with their emails rather than force passwords? Mm, not yet, but we cool. can look into that. Amazing. Um, all right. Oh, there she goes. Um, those are all of the questions that we have right now. Sumalings, this is your moment. Go ahead and send in any questions. Um, there is one follow-up. My client, can my client create an account for free and get access to extra features? Uh, well, when they uh, create the account for free, they get all of these features, the top few set. What they don't get are the, is the ability to customize mail templates, settings, uh, mail groups, and status. But otherwise, all the features are there. They can upload files, they can add, and if you share a workspace with them, yeah, awesome. you can access your. Uh, awesome, awesome. Thank you so much uh, for taking the time to answer all of those. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and come back on camera. Thank you, Sumalings, uh, for submitting all of your questions. Of course, as soon as I come back on, uh, the, there are more questions coming in. That's okay. If you have any more questions, go ahead and leave those on the deal page. The deal page is located at appsumo.com slash quick reviewer. Um, if you have not already, you can go ahead and redeem your code starting at just $49 for a lifetime deal. And of course, that is backed by AppSumo's 60-day guarantee. So you can go ahead and get set up, start playing with it, uh, and see how it all works for you and for your team. Um, if you, yeah, again, if you have any more questions, leave those on the deal page. And of course, if you've already gotten uh, some codes and you want to let us know how the experience is going for you, we would absolutely love to hear that over in the comment section on the deal page. Um, we love to know, yeah, how these tools are helping your business. So thank you so much, Akal, for uh, hanging out with us today, walking us through everything, and for answering all of our questions. Thank you so much, Lindsay. You are awesome. Thank you to everybody uh, who has joined us and have a good one.